guys, today I'm back in Besiege and I want to try making a working semi-automatic shotgun. I'm not sure what else to say, so let's just get right into it. So I started out in the sandbox here and the first thing I wanted to work on was the bullets. Now the bullets are going to determine the sizing for like everything else and also they determine how careful I have to be when holding them. So I wanted to start with them here. Now you'll notice I have a bomb and I surround it by a bunch of wood and it's sort of holding the bomb in place, but I don't like how much the wood is bowing. So I tried bracing the wood together, but that seemed to just cause things to explode. It was either that or it would eject it out the back and then it would basically be useless. So the solution here is I need to space out the wood further, but I didn't really want to use wood here because it's a little annoying to work with since it's slightly asymmetrical. And the easiest way for me to go here is just to use ballast. So I basically recreated what I had, just use ballast instead. And you'll notice I'm pushing out the ballast slightly on the sides and pulling them in on the top and the bottom. That means I got a pretty tight hug on the bomb. And with that, it seems to work pretty well. After that, I wanted to put a ballast in the back as well. And this just prevents it from falling out when I'm loading it in. So with that down, just used a few braces to hold it all in place. And given it a test here, it sort of had this weird problem where it instantly exploded. And I realized that what it was doing was slightly clipping into the ballast, meaning that it was getting ejected back. So I moved the ballast back just to prevent that from happening anymore. And after that, I put down some ballast here and you'll see I'm making sort of a tube. And inside this tube, I'm putting more ballast, but these are actually completely disconnected from everything else. And they're gonna be my bullets. So I ended up putting three in the barrel just cause it was convenient to load in. After that, to fire off the bomb at a very precise time, what I'm gonna use is a flamethrower. Now I'm not gonna have this on every single bullet, but just for the testing here, you can see I can use it, explodes the bomb pretty easily and everything goes flying. But I had to turn on unbreakable mode to really have this be obvious. As soon as I fire, one of the bullets goes really far. I have one go reasonably far and one not really go that far at all. And I think the problem is that stacking three bullets in here doesn't really work because it means the bullets in the back are gonna hit the front bullet and then lose a bunch of energy. So the solution here is instead of putting them in a line, I want them to all be pretty much right in front of the bomb. So you'll see I'm doing that here. I have three bullets. The two in the front are slightly further forward. That's just because it was convenient to put them in place like that. And after that, I just extended out the tube to make room for everything here. And blowing off the bomb, at least at first, this first bullet really seemed to go. And trying that again without me focused on a bullet, it seems to work really well. I have this really nice spread of all the three bullets here, and that seems to work pretty well. So I liked the idea, but the bullet was already getting way too big. So to solve that problem, I'm using some panels here. Now the paneling is nice because it'll hold everything in place without being too thick. And after I got two of those in place, I just finished up the whole thing like this. And it looked good, but I wanted to make it circular just to make room for all the ballast I want to put in here. So I just made sure to use the curved nodes, get everything looking good. And I realized I didn't curve it enough, so I just went a little bit further with it. And after that, it actually looked really circular. So I just fixed up the back as well. And with that, got a perfect tube. So I just moved this right onto the bullet where I needed it to go. And after I did that, I put in a ballast here and I actually put in a few more and I'm gonna put four bullets in here. Now it seems to fit reasonably nicely in here, but when I go to shoot it, it doesn't seem to work very well at all. I have one that kind of goes somewhere, but the rest all barely go anywhere at all. So I pull them in a little bit further. And once I do that, for whatever reason, it seemed to perform a lot better. I got a pretty random spread, which is actually something I was looking for, and they all seemed to go really far. So I just extended out the bullet to make it look a little more realistic. I flipped it upside down just to see how it would perform, but it was pretty much as I expected. The problem is the ballast fall out, but not only that, the bomb actually falls out as well. So to prevent the bomb from falling out, what I wanted to do is use some paneling. I could have used a ballast or something, but the paneling ended up being slightly more space efficient. And once I got all those in place, it seemed to hug the bomb a little bit better as well. So in case of some sort of shock force, it shouldn't instantly detonate it. And even those extra panels in place, it still seems to perform just as well. But when I flip it over, the ballast still just falls straight out of here. So my solution for that was to completely cover the front part with wood. And you might think that'll prevent the ballast from falling out, but that didn't at all. In fact, they just slipped right through. So I do extend it out even further. And once I did that, I also put in a back wall so the ballast couldn't fall further into the bullet. Even though there's two extra pieces of wood there, they still seem to perform equally as well, if not better. Now I ended up evolving the front panel a few times and I ended up deciding that curving them like this and also making it out of glass gave me generally the best performance. So that done, I deleted the flamethrower, and now that I have the bare bullet, it's time to create the magazine. Now I wanted to keep the magazine as simple as possible, because adding any extra stuff to it was probably just going to cause the bullets to twist in it and not work at all. So my first idea here was just to use some ballast to get the sides of the bullet as nicely as possible and just barely have them fit in. Once I had the walls pretty well defined, I used some braces here just to hold the whole thing together. After that, I finished up building up the walls using some logs. Now this is definitely going to create a lot of lags, and I'm using so many logs for this, but I think it looks pretty cool to have all the logs, so I was gonna run with it here, and once I had that, I just had to do the far walls, but once I put these in place, I immediately was a little bit worried. The problem is, they're not really braced by anything, so as I move the bullet back and forth here, they sort of just jiggle back and forth a lot. So I used some extra braces to hold them together, and once I had that, it was time to put in the second bullet. Now, I just slotted that in pretty easily, and once I had that, I deleted the bottom slightly, and I changed it out for this one. Now, the idea is that it's actually not attached to any of the walls at all, I'm gonna be a 
able to pull it up manually using some winches. Now, once I build up this top part, I've started putting down some winches on it, and as I pull these up, I'm hoping the bottom plate doesn't twist or anything, and it should just eject all of these in the right way. And pulling it up, it seems to work pretty well. The first bullet comes out, and it seems pretty straight. I just threw that off to the side, and pulling up the second one also seems to work pretty well. So, with that looking good, I just copied it over and doubled it up. Now, I wanted four bullets, because that seemed like a pretty good number, and any more than that, I was kind of worried that it was going to break, and of course, any less than that, it's not really that many. This seemed like a good balance, and pulling them up also seemed to work pretty well here. After I had that, I ended up rotating the magazine by a few degrees, and that's what I could put in the barrel. Now, I started out just making it all out of wood, and I was kind of figuring out what size I wanted here. All I knew is that it had to fit the bullet, and I didn't know how much slop I realistically wanted. But I ended up settling on this sort of design, which pretty tightly fit the bullet, and it prevents it from twisting too much. Now, at the base of that looking good there, loaded up a bullet here, and I brought it to the front, and just wanted to give it a quick test. Now, with it up there, I ended up just moving back and forth the bomb to make it go off, and the explosion managed to set off a chain reaction and set off all of the other bombs as well. So I knew I had to extend out the barrel a little bit more to prevent that, and I actually did, but the fire still spread through all the wood and caused the bombs to explode. So I can't use any wood here, and I have to use ballasts. This will prevent any fire from reaching the other bullets, but it also makes the barrel extremely weak since I have a bunch of disjointed ballasts here. Now once I got all this in place here, I gave it a test, and... It was interesting. So I added on some braces just to prevent that from happening and also put in some pins as well. And with that done, it was a lot better this time. So I ended up wrangling a bullet all the way up to the front and I wanted to give it a quick shot here. So I just jostled the bullet around and it kind of did this, which was interesting. So it turned on unbreakable again, and it seemed to work just fine. Nothing was exploding. So with that done, the next thing to work on is to figure out a way to not have me manually drag them to the front every single time. In order to do that, I'm building up some ballast in the back here, and I'm looking them together with a bunch of braces. Once I did that, I used some ropes and winches again, and I'm going to use these to pull the system all the way up to the front, and that pulling is also going to drag along the bullet and hopefully get me the effect I want. Now, the first test didn't work so well. It flipped on its back, and then fell in the magazine. So to add some more tension to the system, what I ended up doing was extending out the back of the barrel a bit, and I added in some ropes and winches here to pull on this to prevent it from flipping over. Once I had that in place, I loaded up a bullet here, and I started to pull it forward, and it was already a lot better. I started pulling it in place, but I noticed that it was sort of freely moving around the barrel wherever it wanted, and it ended up jamming in the top right corner. It seems like the bullets still will jam, and I have to be a little bit careful about how I push them. But after enough pain, I managed to drag it all the way to the front here, but even this, when I exploded the bomb, I got this really cool motion out of the barrel, and nothing seemed to explode, which was great. But I waited a little bit longer, and I noticed that the rope were catching on fire. And if the ropes are going to catch on fire, I really just can't use them because there's no way for me to make them fireproof. So I had to delete them here and I ended up deleting the whole system to create some room and I'm creating a channel in the barrel. This is for my next system here and I'm going to use this channel to very carefully guide my next system so it always stays centered in the middle of the barrel and it can't rotate at all. So as I put that all in place, I'm using some ballasts and these are in those channels. Once I had that there, it was pretty much stuck in those channels and it wasn't able to move out of the way. Now in order to move these around, I'm I'm gonna use some springs here. Now, springs work pretty well. You see, it pulled it all the way up to the front just fine, but they shouldn't catch on fire. So if I load in a bullet here and give it a shot, it pulls it in reasonably well, and it was seemingly getting stuck on something, and then it caused everything to explode. But a second try, it ended up working out just fine, but trying to pull it to the front, it seemed to get stuck in that same position every time. So what I ended up doing is moving the springs further forward, which isn't great, because it doesn't look very good, but I figured I'd just deal with the aesthetics of it later, and as long as I get it functionally working now, I should be able to figure it out. Put those springs further forward, was able to pull that piece in just fine. And the reason I'm using that X pattern with the springs is actually to pull the whole mechanism in a bit more to keep it off the walls. But moved up to the front of the barrel just fine, and I tried loading in a bullet next. Now, I had the same problem as before. It was getting stuck on something, and I couldn't figure out what it was, but I realized it's actually getting stuck on the bullet below the one I just loaded in. So I have to lower the magazine a little bit to prevent that from happening, but with that done, I actually loaded in the next bullet so well it flew out of the end of the barrel. So to get it to return back, I put some springs in the back of the barrel, and now I'm able to load up the bullet to the very front, and once I explode it here, everything seems to be fine, nothing seems to go crazy, and I'm able to pull it back. It's a little finicky, and this is a problem that I fix later, but I actually did manage to get it all the way to the back reasonably easily just by spamming some keys and adding some extra ballast in place. So with that done, it's time to start working on the trigger. Now, this is actually one of the easiest parts here, because I basically just stacked a bunch of ballast like this, and once I had that looking good, I just made sure 
to brace them all into place. And I added in some hinges and this is gonna allow the trigger to move back and forth. Test it out, seems to swing back and forth just fine. So I added in some wood to the back and I added in some suspension and this acts as a spring to keep the trigger forward. But I noticed it was actually preventing the trigger from rotating at all. So what I ended up doing is moving it one block further back and I added in a hinge on top of the suspension. Once I did this, pulling it back was a lot easier and it seemed to perform a lot better. So to have the bullets ignite, I'm using a flamethrower again, but instead of being on the bullet, it's on the loading mechanism. But I noticed that now it was causing bullets to explode pretty often. And that's when I noticed the flamethrower was a little far forward and I think it was hitting the bomb and acting like a pin and just instantly detonating it. So I moved it further back to keep it from hitting it early. And once I did that, I had no problems again of it accidentally exploding. And I was able to move it to the front. And once I had it there, I ended up igniting the flamethrower and it pretty much instantly ignited the bomb. And I got some good bullets coming out of it. So of course, the next step here is to automate it. And to do that, I'm adding in a whole bunch of timers and these are actually just for the movement system. Now I was saying before it was pretty finicky. In order to fix that, I added in some timers here and you see one is faster than the other, but they both loop infinitely. And if I press the key to load in the bullets, what it's gonna do is turn on these two logic gates and it ends up intermittently helling it to go forward and it vibrates it at different rates. And with the movement looking good, the next thing I wanted to do is add in some sensors here. Now I added one in the back. This detects if it's ready to load another bullet. I added one in the front. This detects if it fully ejected the last bullet. I added one on the top. This detects if the bullet got fully loaded into the barrel. And finally, I have one in the very end here. This one detects if the trigger is ready to be pressed. And after I did that, I just added in a whole bunch more logic to control all of this and tie in all of those sensors. And I got it to a point where it was working pretty well. I got it all loaded up. And if I pull the trigger, it ends up blowing up the bullet and it ends up clearing it here. After it does that, it pulls it all the way back in and starts loading up another bullet. Now with the logic in a pretty good state, the next thing I wanted to do is work on the aesthetics. Now I'll talk about this reasonably quickly since it's mostly a visual thing anyway, but I started working on the trigger guard here and this is probably the easiest of all the things I worked on. And you can see here, it covers everything up well. It's definitely not the most realistic thing, but it works pretty well. Now with that done, I added on some sights to the front and this is pretty easy. I just stacked a couple ballasts and I ended up using a couple braces as well and it got a pretty good look. And after that, the next thing I wanted to do is work on the handle. And this was a little tricky. I had to make sure the positioning was right and I also had to make sure it was the right length and everything. But I ended up deciding the front part of it looked great, but the back looked horrible. So I ended up deleting the back part and I ended up fixing it up and I think it looked a little bit better now. And with all that done, the next thing to work on is the stock. Now again, I have to be kind of careful with the angles and stuff, make sure everything looks good. And also that the length was pretty realistic and I think it might've been a little long, but for the most part, everything looks pretty good here. And after all that, I added in some wood paneling just to finish up all the extra gaps. And finally with that done, I had to deal with these stupid springs in the front. And in order to fix that, I just sort of extended out the barrel and pretended that it was part of the design. I did have to leave a gap open on the bottom because the bullets need to drop out of there. But with all that done, I wanted to go for a final test here. Now, starting on this first bullet, it wasn't too great. It got a little jammed. I think it would have unjammed itself, but I ended up using the drag tool to save myself like five minutes of pain. And after that, it loaded the bullet all the way up to the front. And after that, I pulled the trigger and I got a great fire here. Four bullets came out and the bullet fully ejected itself. With that done, loading mechanism went all the way to the back and ended up automatically loading in a second bullet. This one went way smoother than the first. It jammed a little bit, but I needed none of my help at all and loaded itself up just fine and I pulled the trigger here and it wasn't so great. I got one shot that came out, but it still seemed to mostly work. And after that was done, bullet fell out and it was time to load in the third bullet. This one went even smoother than the first two. It loaded up the fastest of all of them. And once that was done, I pulled the trigger and it went horribly. The bullet flew out and nothing else seemed to really come out. So with that, I only have one bullet left and I was really hoping that this one was gonna be pretty good. So I just got that loaded up in place here and going for the final shot here, it actually wasn't half bad. I had one bullet go crazy far. The other one go reasonably far as well. So guys, thanks for watching. I've been meaning to make this video since I made my minigun in Siege and I think it turned out pretty well. So if you have any other ideas of what I should make, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. Make sure to like the video if you like the build and otherwise until next time.